Welcome to Trial Site News Weekly Roundup. Today on our episode, we're going to cover Advent Health Ocala's ICAM protocol, which takes on COVID-19. Clinician drives real-world evidence and breakthrough. Then, Argentina study supports ivermectin for COVID-19, followed by Avigan or favapiravir, which meets endpoint in phase three Japanese clinical trial. The sponsor will register as a therapy for COVID-19. And finally, while AZD-1222 clinical trial resumes in the UK and India, FDA keeps the study on hold due to mystery illnesses. All of this is coming up now. Physicians, nurses, and all healthcare workers have served heroically during this pandemic, not only in the U.S., but all over the world. Faced with a novel coronavirus and minimal treatment options, and in the case of remdesivir, severe shortages and high costs, health systems, hospitals, and community clinics seek alternative, safe treatments that can save lives. Recently, a pharmacist serving as a director of pharmacy for Advent Health Ocala, Florida, faced a challenging situation as COVID-19 cases spiked. While the only provisionally approved medication at the time, remdesivir, was in short supply. So what does this innovative health system do in this situation? Well, in the case of Advent Health Ocala, part of the nation's largest not-for-profit, Protestant-based health system, they tapped into their knowledge and creativity, medical and scientific intellect, as well as a drive and desire to save lives and developed a protocol called ICAM. Now, it appears to be effective observationally. If ICAM proves to work consistently, Advent Health and Carlet Norwood Williams Farm D and her colleagues have done the nation, and for that matter, the world, a compelling service. Next comes a study to investigate the efficacy of the combination treatment. Now, Dr. Charlotte Norwood Williams, a Texas Southern University graduate serving as a director of pharmacy at Advent Health, didn't sit still when faced with growing COVID-19 cases and shortages of the only provisionally FDA-approved medication at the time. She and a group of dedicated physicians and other health care professionals at Advent Health got to work on researching alternatives, a process that occurs often before the pandemic at Advent Health and other clinics nationwide. Now, during the pandemic, as Trial Site News has reported, health providers often had to take matters into their own hands. A new protocol developed in Florida shows promise and even received approval for a local health study, reported Advent Health. Again, developed by Advent Health's Charlotte Norwood Williams, a pharmacist by training and colleagues included physicians from Advent Health, this protocol was formulated under pandemic conditions, out of the office and based on an understanding of how the underlying therapies actually worked, combined with growing observational data as to how COVID-19 was impacting patients. Now, all medications used in ICAM are within their original FDA indications. This is important. No medication was used off-label or outside of indication. However, the specific combination as a regimen is unique, chosen because of the consistent evidence of improvements in inflammatory markers of patients admitted with COVID-19. So what is ICAM? Well, it is an acronym. The I stands for immunosupport and includes vitamin C and zinc to help boost the immune system. C represents the corticosteroid methylprednisolone, which can reduce inflammation in the lungs for augmenting breathing. A equals anticoagulant, such as inoxaparin, a blood thinner that can help stop blood clotting seen in more severe cases of COVID-19. And finally, the M stands for macrolide, such as azithromycin, which is often called a Z-pack, and is an antibiotic used to mitigate probability of pneumonia. So, in summary, the ICAM protocol is a combination of vitamin C and zinc, corticosteroid, anticoagulant, and macrolide, which each treatment was considered and selected for its contribution to a problem associated with COVID-19. Now, in the interview with the Ocala Star Banner, Dr. Norwood Williams said that the ICAM protocol was developed based on consideration of how patients' inflammatory response reacted to the medications. In the majority of deaths associated with the virus, COVID-19 is no longer active in the body. Death occurs from the body's inflammation response to the infection. So ICAM was conceived and based on this consideration. 
According to Norwood Williams, it provides protection in the body until the virus runs out of gas. Now, this protocol is not used in mild to moderate COVID-19 cases, but rather those COVID-19 patients admitted to the hospital. Norwood Williams reports that over 96% of the patients administered the ICAM protocol medication combination has stayed out of the ICU and off respirators, which is an impressive metric. The Florida pharmacist commented in the Health System's news account saying that for 76 days, our patients had zero transfers to the intensive care unit, zero mechanical ventilator placement, and zero death with ICAM and ICAM similar regimens. Now, the ICAM protocol has been approved by Avent Health's Institutional Review Board, and the 100-patient study was just initiated this week. The Marion County study will include participation from the Florida Department of Health and the Heart of Florida Health Center. Now, for those in Marion County that have been diagnosed with COVID-19, consider contacting the local health department of the Heart of Florida Health Center. To learn more about Avent Health, you can visit adventhealth.com. Argentina's largest newspaper, Clarin, reported on September 23rd about positive results in an ivermectin study, including reduced viral loads. In a study conducted in the nation, Clarin posits that this is the first scientific evidence available in the world which manages to verify the effect of this drug on the coronavirus under in vivo conditions in infected patients. The results were reported on Wednesday from the Ministry of Science and Technology and followed in a four-month effort. The work was conducted by public-private consortium being led by Alejandro of the Tropical Diseases Research Institute. Scientists explained that the 0.6 milligram per dose was three times the amount usually used. They said that this dose produced the fastest and most profound elimination of the virus when treatment is started in the early stages of infection, up to five days from the onset of symptoms. Now, I have to remind you that ivermectin is not approved by the U.S. nor by the World Health Organization. I have to make sure to mention this to stay within the guidelines for YouTube. When a drug is not approved by the World Health Organization, we have to let you know. So, going forward, we'll be taking this additional step. Now back to the story. Studies started in May, after the consortium was chosen for funding. About 6 million pesos was awarded. Testing was done with 45 patients with moderate or mild COVID-19. 30 got the high-dose ivermectin and the remainder were controls. Those who received the drug presented an artificial response significantly different from those not treated. The effect was evidenced in the deeper decrease of virus in secretions. Now, Krolwicki went on to say that the most relevant thing is that it is the first study that demonstrates the effect of ivermectin in patients. All over the world, a verification was being awaited to establish whether this drug has the potential to treat coronavirus patients. Experts noted that this is the first step and that we will have to carry out other investigations to establish methods of clinical application and the eventual possibility of being used as a prevention tool. Now, Adrian Lifchitz, a professor of pharmacology at Unison, was the lead for the study of ivermectin concentrations in plasma samples of the trial subjects. He said that we found that the medication produced a rapid viral elimination from the body, and this helps to reduce the probability of infection. The effect that ivermectin causes on the rate of disappearance of the virus depends on the amount of the drug that is absorbed after taking it orally. Now, this becomes a proof of concept of high scientific value. It confirms the need to use dose levels higher than those traditionally applied, according to the researcher and member of Civitan. The design development and analysis of the study was public-private cooperation formed by the Veterinary Research Center of Tando and the Biotechnological Services Platform, the LA Phoenix SA Laboratory, the Tropical Diseases Research Institute, National University of Salta, and at the Virology Laboratory of the Garahan Hospital. And of course, we'll be continuing to keep you posted on this study as it continues to develop. Fujifilm Toyama Chemical Company, LTD, reports that the primary endpoint has been met for its phase three clinical trial of Avigan tablet, conducted in Japan for patients infected with SARS-CoV-2. The efficacy primary endpoint is time to negative conversion of detectable SARS-CoV-2 viral RNA in the RT-PCR assays and time to alleviation of symptoms, such as body temperature, oxygen saturation, and chest images. The trial site news recently reported Fujifilm will move to commercialize it as a COVID-19 therapy. 
So, as I mentioned, Fujifilm initiated a Phase 3 clinical trial of Avigan in Japan back in March for COVID-19 patients with non-severe pneumonia. The company conducted a randomized placebo-controlled single-blind comparative study to evaluate the efficacy and safety of Avigan. The median value of primary endpoints using 156 individuals as analysis targets were 11.9 days for the Avigan group and 14.7 days for the placebo group. Fujifilm confirmed with a statistically significant difference of 0.0136 that the administration of Avigan to COVID-19 patients with non-serious pneumonia demonstrates shorter time to resolution. The adjusted hazard ratio showed 1.593 of 1.024 through 2.479. No new safety concerns were observed in this trial. Now, Fujifilm is already approved for treating influenza. The antiviral selectively inhibits RNA polymerase necessary for influenza virus replication. Fujifilm suggests that this mechanism of action applies to the novel coronavirus as well, which happens to be an RNA virus of the same type as influenza viruses. Now, the Japanese government has requested Avigan for its COVID-19 stockpile. Thus, Fujifilm has embarked on a path in collaboration with strategic partners to produce more of the drug. Now, as we here at Trialsight News have chronicled, favapiravir, or Avigan, has already been approved in Russia, India, China, and Bangladesh, as well as other nations as an antiviral therapy for the COVID-19 indication. A handful of clinical trials are now ongoing in the United States. AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine candidate AZD-1222, also known as the Oxford vaccine, or Chedoxy and COVID-19, was purportedly under consideration by at least some factions within the U.S. executive branch to contribute to a potential October surprise, while the vaccine was under consideration for an expedited approval process prior to the forthcoming U.S. presidential election. Why? Well, according to a report from the Financial Times, it is because of what was deemed positive results from a relatively small UK study. Trial site news wrote that the Phase 3 AstraZeneca study was designed for an unprecedentedly fast conclusion when considering estimated start date and estimated primary completion date it equal to 3.5 months, as compared to an average of about 15 months for every other Phase 3 COVID-19 vaccine trial. But by September 6th, what it now appears to be at least two safety events associated with the clinical trial contributed to a temporary hold on the study. By September 12th, the UK's Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, or the MHRA deemed the study safe to resume, and India followed suit. As we reported on September 16th, when India's DCGI gave Serum Institute of India the green light to resume the study with some caveats. In the meantime, in what has become a politicized process all the way around, the sponsor's lack of sufficient transparency hasn't contributed to an expedited FDA review and approval to resume the study. The FDA is taking its time to diligently, methodically, and holistically analyze the safety incidents to better understand what and how the neurological illnesses associated with the study occurred. Thereafter, the agency undoubtedly assesses the risk of proceeding with the study. Now, why the FDA is taking more time and effort than their counterparts in England or India is not certain, but this U.S. agency represents the gold standard of food and drug regulatory authority. Now, we here at Trial Site News would like to remind everyone that any vaccine development effort involving a novel disease will most certainly include some twists and turns, including safety incidents. That the study was put on hold in the bigger scheme of things is a healthy process, indicating that the regulatory process is working. Patient safety is of highest concern. However, with AstraZeneca's acceptance of over $1 billion in U.S. public funds for the clinical development and at-risk manufacturing of AZD-1222, a good case can be made that transparency is necessary and due to the public. Thank you for joining us for this week's Weekly Roundup. As always, we appreciate you taking the time to spend with us here, and we can't wait to see you next time.